Hello, in this lecture we'll be working a problem related to recording entries for petty cash. We'll have the entries on this side over here. We're going to record the journal entries in this blue area here and we will then post those to this shortened posting area where we can see the beginning trial balance which we know is in balance because the debits which are non-bracketed less the credits which have brackets equals zero as we can see here and the net income is calculated at the revenue less the expenses down here meaning that this is income not a loss meaning that the credits are beating the debits in that the credits being sales less the expenses is a credit balance of 4905 that is our net income we also have the accounting equation up top in that we're showing the total assets the liabilities there are none and the equity as shown here let's take a look at our first transaction and work through this problem so we have on 5-1 uh prepare prepared a company check to set up petty cash fund so first we're going to start and put together a petty cash fund and we're going to do that as of 5-1 so i'll put the date here we will check out these accounts the first thing i usually ask is is cash affected in this journal entry and of course we are going to write a check to set up petty cash therefore cash is affected here's the cash account Cash is a debit balance represented by the fact that there's no brackets around the amount here. We need to make it go down because we're going to write a check in order to set up the petty cash. The way to make something go down is we do the opposite thing to it as what it is. This is a debit, therefore we're going to credit it in order to make it go down. Credits usually go on the bottom, so I'm going to put it here on the bottom under the date in cell C6. I'm going to right click and paste it 1, 2, 3, just the values only in this case. I'm going to put it in column E, E6 here. I'm going to make represent our credits with a negative number, which when I hit enter will put brackets around it. Excel sees it as a negative number. We see it as a credit as well as something that will act like a negative number when we post it as we will see. 250. I'm going to hit control and enter. That will put us on the cell rather than in the cell. Then I'm going to put a debit for the same amount. I'm going to do that by saying negative instead of equals and point to this number and enter so we need a debit of 250 we need a credit of 250 we know that the credit is going to cash all we need now is to know the account that will be debited and of course we are setting up a petty cash fund therefore that account will be petty cash it will also be a cash account it will be separate from this cash account of course this cash account generally being our check-in account for the most part i'm going to go ahead and copy this one going to paste it in cell C5, right click and paste it 123. Then I'm going to post this and see what happens to our journal entries over here. So if we put our cursor, let's start with the petty cash in I6. We're going to say equals and use the um, formulas in order to, to post this and point to the petty cash of 250. This is a debit. Cash is a debit balance account. It's going to make the cash go up in the debit direction puts us out of balance by the 250, no effect on net income. Then we'll go to the cash count in I5, and I'm gonna say equals and point to the cash. This is a credit, this is a debit. These are opposite things, therefore it's gonna make the debit balance go down. So we'll hit enter, makes it go down, uh, puts us back in balance, no effect on net income. So now we have our petty cash. So this cash, of course, is in some kind of safe within or some kind of holding area in the office and we can then spend it on certain transactions that may just need to be spent with cash rather than anything else of course generally being small transactions we will then record these and keep the receipts of these transactions within the lockbox and at the end of a time period we can then take a look at the petty cash and see what has been spent and record that transaction that's going to be the second thing that will happen here so on 515, apparently we do this every uh, mid-month, or we have 515, or every month. And we're going to say a company check to replenish the petty cash fund for the expenditures below. So we went through the, the petty cash fund, and we see that we have these receipts for these expenditures in there, and we're going to record the replenishment. So obviously, as far as our books go at this point, we have 250 in the cash, but there's not that much in the cash box because of course we have not yet recorded the things that have spent on until this time and now we're going to go ahead and record those 
So what did we have? We've got uh, payment for janitorial services. So these are generally going to be expense type items that we're going to use. So expenses are going to be below the capital account here. They're going to be, this is revenue and they're probably going to be somewhere in the expenses. Now, in this case, we have a janitorial expense. So um, that will, of course, be the area that we'll put this to. It will be the, pro the job of the accounting department to decide if these expenses are large enough to make a separate expense account that could be pooled into other accounts. Key is to have some consistency, of course, between the accounts. Note that all the expenses have debit balances. We're going to make them go up by doing the same thing to it, which is another debit, because expenses always go up. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in cell C8, right click and paste it one, two, three. Then we have a payment for miscellaneous expenses. So we don't know what that is, but we're just going to plug it into the miscellaneous expense at this time. And so we have miscellaneous expense. Of course, it's a debit balance. It's going to go up by doing the same thing to it, which is another debit. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it right here in cell C9. Right click, paste it, one, two, three. And so the first one was $78 for janitorial and 63.68 for the miscellaneous. Then we paid postage expense. All right, so we have postage expense. And in this case, again, we have the postage expense in this case. But note that in real life, we, we may put it into something else. We may want to break out something for postage expense. We might put it all into delivery expense or something like that. That is up to the, the bookkeeping department to determine how specific they want to get on the expense accounts. We're going to say copy this and put it in cell C10. Right click, paste it, one, two, three. Then we have paid for advertising. So advertising expense. So if we look at our expenses down here, we have an advertising expense. Once again, all the expenses you can see have debit balances. They only go one way for the most part. That's up. Therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So I'm going to put that in cell C11, right click, paste it, one, two, three. So the postage was 43.5, advertising 57.15. And then, uh, then we have the remaining petty cash count was only 19. So what this means is when we open the lockbox and we count what is left of the original 250 that we put into the petty cash, there's only 1917 left. What we want to do is write a check to bring it back up to the standard amount that we've set, which is 250. So if there's only 1917 left, then if we pull up the calculator here, we're going to say, all right, we want it to be this 250 and minus there's only 19.17 in there therefore we need a check for $230.83 in order for the petty cash to be back in balance so that's going to come out of the cash account so we're going to decrease the cash cash is a debit balance we're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it which in this case is a credit by 230.83 so i'm going to copy this I'm going to paste it in cell C12. We're going to credit cash. We're going to write a check and reduce the cash amount by, we're going to make it a credit with a negative 230.83. And that will give us the bracketed amounts. Now note that the debits, that if I add these up by highlighting these numbers, they add up to 242.33. And this adds up to, uh, and we need to replenish the account by the 230.83. So that means that we're off. We have, we have a difference, of course, in the amounts of receipts that we have versus the amount that we have counted in the petty cash to bring us back up to the amount of the 250. Therefore, uh, we're going to have to have an adjusting entry of 242.33 minus the 230.83, and that gives us an adjustment of 1150. We're going to need a credit in this case of 1150, credit of 11.5 in order for our debits to add up to 242.33 and our credits to add up to 242.33. There is another way if we use this uh, plus and minus kind of system in, in order to uh, write our debits and credits to put this plug in there. I would put it in there in a formula such as this, negative instead of equals SUM of these numbers this plus this plus this plus this minus this then it will flip the sign to give us that same number therefore if we highlight all of these then the debits minus the credits will equal zero meaning the debits equal the credits meaning we're in balance 
So this last account that we're going to put the difference. The end. <laughs>